I have to introduce someone who I believe, I believe has exemplified everything I just described. And if you saw that Friday, right a day after the storm hit, we were at LaGuardia Airport ready to board the first plane to Puerto Rico. I was blessed to represent my colleagues in the legislature and our speaker, Carl Hasty, and to join our governor in that first flight. During that flight and that press conference, many of you heard me mention that it was mommy's birthday that day, and I had yet to speak to my mother and didn't know what her situation was, and that September 22nd was mommy's birthday, and symbolically, I took with me a birthday card. And I had it in my pocket, and I took it on the flight, and when we got to Puerto Rico, obviously, we weren't there to interrupt any of the effort. But Governor Rosselló, I told him the story, and he said, give me the card. I will make sure she gets it. People heard me talk about that story, and ever since I've been asked, how is your mom? And has your mom received the card? Well, I have a quick update for each and every one of you, and if you can switch over, I want to let you know that mommy is okay. I was able to speak to her two weeks after the storm hit. She is doing just fine. And just this week, if we could switch over to the other photo, we're going to get there. But just this week, we, uh, I got a call from mommy. There's mommy in front of the Plaza Barroyo. That is her birthday card delivered by the governor, Governor Rosselló. You should also know the $100 that were in there were still in there. And mommy thanked me so much because she was, couldn't get access to the bank and like so many families were struggling to, to buy the resource she needed. But there's mommy, you can see the trees in the back. I grew up hanging out in that plaza. I won't tell you what I did, my wife is here, but we had a, I grew up, there were many, many stories, beautiful stories in that plaza, but you can see the damage. But what matters more is that mommy is standing on her feet and like so many Puerto Ricans, she's gonna stay there, she's gonna fight back, she's gonna rebuild, and we're gonna make sure that Puerto Rico gets to where it needs to be. And the person that has exemplified that response, the person that has stood up was the first one presente, the first one to organize and deliver, the person who has put the resources necessary to have the kind of response that this type of tragedy uh, deserves was not the President of the United States, it wasn't anybody in Congress, it wasn't any other state of, uh, in the country, it it was our great governor of the state of New York who stood up and fought for us. So ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome a man who has responded to Puerto Rico and continues to respond, our governor, Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to Queens. This is a Queens accent. This is my home borough. Terrace on the Park, we are living very large at Terrace on the Park. This is the place in Queens. Had my high school prom, Terrace on the Park. That's right, right here. Platform shoes, baby blue polyester suit, hair up in a fro. Travolta had nothing on me. Let's give a truly great leader, a great leader, and I don't use those words easily. Assemblyman Marcus Crespo, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your friendship. The Speaker Carl Hasty, who's doing a great job, my friend, my colleague, let's give him a round of applause. To our great State Controller, Tom DiNapoli, pleasure to be with you, Thomas. Our speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito. <laughs> Borough President, the frail Ruben Diaz, Jr. I have my team with me today. Alfonso David, our counsel, Robert Mejica, Arlene, Gon Arlene Gonzalez Sanchez, Guillermo Leonardes, and Melissa Caseda. Let's give them a round of applause. Congratulations to Somos. The progress, the growth of Somos, I've watched all my life. And it's inspiring to see how powerful the community has gotten, to see how sophisticated the community has gotten. And I also want people to appreciate the responsibility that Somos has now. They talk about you govern at the time you were elected. 
And my friend, these are difficult, difficult times. These are not times for the faint of heart. Government matters. What we do now matters. This is a time literally of life and death. You look at what we have going on right now. You look at this terrorist attack. You've all seen it on TV. In person, the more you know, the more you've seen, the uglier and the more frightening that it is. Eight deaths, and we were lucky. We were lucky. His plan was to come all the way down the west side and drive all the way around the tip of Manhattan. It was a premeditated, planned, terrorist attack. Textbook, ISIS, off the internet. Anyone can do it. Anyone can rent a car. Anyone can rent a truck. Why? Because we're New York. We're the target. We are the enemy of everything they resent. We have the Statue of Liberty in our harbor holding the torch. It says freedom and democracy. And that makes us the enemy of these terrorists. I'd love to be able to say, well, that's the first and the last time. It's not. I'd love to be able to say, well, don't worry. We can protect ourselves in a way so, to make sure nobody gets hurt. But we can't. It is who we are that they oppose. And we have to stand stronger and more united than ever before. They didn't win when they killed eight people. Because they didn't want to kill eight people. They wanted to create the terror, the mayhem, the fear. They wanted us to fight one another. They wanted disunity. And that's why I was so proud to see New Yorkers react yesterday and today. We went to the Halloween party last night. One million people came out. And I went and I marched, not because I had a great costume, <laughs> but because I wanted to say to New Yorkers, we're not going to let them disrupt us. We're stronger, we're better, we're going to live our lives, and we're going to do it proudly. Now, it took, it took less than 24 hours for the Republicans in Congress to start to use the event. And you know how they use the event? Well, it's the immigrants. The immigrants. If we didn't let in these different people, we wouldn't have this problem. They went right back to the rhetoric of the campaign. And the rhetoric of the campaign was brilliant. Do not underestimate the enemy. The rhetoric of the campaign is politics of division, is divide and conquer, is to literally go to our strength, which is our diversity, and try to make it a weakness and turn us one against the other. You look at everything they've done. It's always been about trying to divide. Black from white, what they said in Charlottesville, well, there are two sides to the story. Sometimes there are good white supremacists. There are no good white supremacists in America. They want to separate us rich from poor. That's what health care is about. They're not against health care. They're just against paying for health care for poor people. They're against Medicaid. They're against child health insurance programs. But if you're rich and you can afford health care, then God bless. You're going to get the best in the United States of America. It's always been about division. New immigrants from old immigrants. And when it comes to Puerto Rico, it is that same sense of division. Assemblyman Crespo is exactly right. People don't even know that Puerto Ricans are Americans. They don't. It's in some place else. It's another country. It's another island. We don't know what it is. But it's not Americans. And that's why they have been so delinquent in their response to Puerto Rico. 
70% of the people still without water. 30% of the people drinking what could be poisoned water. 60% of the people without power. Without power. Now, if this were any other state in the United States, Alabama, California, Maine, Imagine the outrage, 42 days without water. Imagine how the, the networks would be there, and CNN, and ABC, and the outrage. Imagine what Congress would say. How can you let Americans be with 42 days without water? But because it's Puerto Rico, you hear nothing. Because Puerto Rico doesn't get the respect that it deserves. And it's a victim of this sense of division. I worked in the federal government. I did disaster assistance. I did 11 disasters when I was there. Florida, New Jersey, North Carolina, California, Alaska, North Dakota, Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Puerto Rico. 11 disasters over eight years. Every other response was better and more responsible than the response that Puerto Rico has gotten. Every other one. 1,500 workers the federal government sent to Puerto Rico. 1,500. You know how many we had for Hurricane Sandy on Long Island? 15,000 workers came to Long Island. You know how many workers Florida has had? While Puerto Rico has had 1,500 after the same storm, Florida has had 27,000. All the power restored in 10 days. Texas, 5,000 workers, 51 dead, 1,000 still in shelters. That's how they're treating Puerto Rico. No other state, never before has the federal government shown Americans such disrespect. And thank God for the people of New York. New York, New York has been first and foremost the number one source of support for Puerto Rico. And that's not rhetorical. That is factual. We sent National Guard, we sent state troopers, we sent doctors, we sent nurses, we sent millions and millions and millions of supplies. Marcus, myself, Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, the first flight to Puerto Rico had New Yorkers on it, bringing help and bringing supplies. The generosity, the outpouring of communities all across the state is heartwarming. And it's not the first time we forged a relationship with Puerto Rico. First, New York State office in Puerto Rico was created by this legislature and this administration. And we're just starting with Puerto Rico. We're just starting. We have Governor Rosselló who's going to come in tomorrow. And we're going to spend the governor day with Governor Rosselló. And we're going to help walk them through this entire crisis. We have a three-step plan. First, we're going to do the damage assessment with Puerto Rico. Because if we allow FEMA to do the damage assessment, it's going to come out to be $42.70. We have foundations. Kathy Wilde has been very helpful. The Rockefeller Foundation, the Ford Foundation. We have the best private sector companies. We're going to put them together with state agencies, Gil Quinones, and our team at NIPA, and our housing department. And we're going to do the damage assessment of the real, true amount of damage to Puerto Rico. And we're going to bring that to that Congress. And we're going to say, give Puerto Rico the amount of money they deserve. Texas already put in their damage assessment, $60 billion. Texas is asking for. And we want to make sure that Puerto Rico gets its fair share of the pot, and we're going to do everything we need to make that happen. The second thing is we're going to come up with a resilience plan. Because the truth is there was a lot of work that had to happen at Puerto Rico in the first place. And the truth is, 
I don't believe this is the last storm you're going to see in Puerto Rico. I don't believe it's the last storm you're going to see in New York or anywhere else. While our friends in Washington deny climate change because they deny science, I think they're kidding themselves. Either it's climate change or Mother Nature has had a nervous breakdown. It's one or the other. But in either case, there are going to be more storms, and this is going to repeat. And we want to build a resilient Puerto Rico and make it better than ever before and more sustainable than ever before. And we're going to get the best consultant team we can put together to design that plan for Puerto Rico. And then we're going to go to the US Congress together and say, Puerto Rico has to be helped. They need their fair share. You've abused them. You abuse them as Americans. You abuse their human rights. We're going to get our congressional delegation, and we're going to do whatever we have to do to get full and fair funding for Puerto Rico. And I'll tell you the silver lining. The silver lining is when New Yorkers, you give us lemons, we give you lemonade. We're going to use this opportunity to build a Puerto Rico back that has been better than ever before. We're going to have a new power system, a new communication system. We'll have new infrastructure. We're not just going to build back what was. We're going to build it better than it's ever been before. We're going to do justice for Puerto Rico. And it is going to be us. We are going to do it, my friends. Our friends in the Assembly, our friends in the Senate, the New York State government is going to do it hand in glove with the people of Puerto Rico. I don't care about the politics of Puerto Rico. I don't know Commonwealth. I don't know statehood. I don't know. I know Governor Rosselló is the governor, and he needs support. And now is not the time to criticize him and knock him down when he's trying to get funding for the people of Puerto Rico. And we are going to stand with him, and we are going to get this done, just like we've gotten everything done. Someone said to me this morning, well, you know, it's going to be hard, because nobody cares about Puerto Rico. You know what we do in New York? We do the things that are hard. We do the things that they say nobody else can get done, and we make it happen. They told us we could never get $15 minimum wage, first state in America to have the $15 minimum wage. They said we couldn't pass paid family leave. We passed paid family leave. They said we'd never get marriage equality passed, first big state to pass marriage equality. We got the highest MWBE in the nation at 30%. We get the job done when we put our mind to it. And we're going to put our mind to building back Puerto Rico better than ever before together. And we're going to be at Somos in Puerto Rico next year celebrating the new Puerto Rico that we built together. Thank you and God bless you.